Hello everyone, my name is John Lazenby. Today I'm going to be going over how to do complex operations and how to solve the circuits within LabVIEW. First off, I'd like to show you the circuits and the code that I have used within this video. On the left is the block diagram that describes the operations used as well as all the code within the LabVIEW program. On the right, as you can see, there's the circuits that we have digested, as well as all the input parameters that you can change within the circuit. This then puts out the value of all three I's listed here, I1, I2, and I3, in a magnitude and a phase. All the angles, it is important to note that all the angles within this code are listed as degrees. Lastly, on the diagram right here, we find the power. This power is of the resistors R1, R2, and R3, whereas it's PR1, PR2, and PR3, respectively. Now I'm going to show you the specifics of the front panel. Here, in a more zoomed in version, of the circuit, we are able to see R1 and L1. The math, basic math that we use, um, the circuit digestion of this, is we combine these two values through math um, using complex numbers to get Z1, the impedance of this value. Then we find the impedance Z2, and then the impedance Z3, finally. Using these impedances, we are able to find V of X. V of X allows us to find the current at each point in the circuit and then also find the power from R1, R2, and R3. All of these parameters are used within finding the values in the circuit. These are all custom set, so you're able to change the values as you would please. This then gives, this then plugs out the value of V of X as these values change. Right now, the values in blue that are used, the input values, these ones are given. But we can change these and see how the yellow values, the red values, and the dark blue values change. Now we have a value of V of X, 4.72 real volts, minus 8.722 J volts. And then if we go back to the given values, we are able to see we are able to see the given values from here. There we go. Um, now we've returned back to where it originally was, and we are able to see this. On the left, we can now see the block diagram. To describe how the math works, I went into a little bit of detail on the last page. Now you can see the frequency, all the inputs, and then all the outputs, as well as our little V of X output up here on the bottom. The important operations to, take in, to be taken notes are a little difficult to see, but you can see how we take the complex operations um, converting polar into rectangular. Every time this happens, there's a little block here with R being the magnitude, theta being the phase, and Z being the rectangular form. You can see this here with V2, you can see this here with the, you can see this here with the uh, frequency, as well as here with the frequency again. And then at the ends of the circuit, we convert back out of rectangular into polar, and we separate the magnitude and the phase of I. Here, we also have to do an important mathematical equation, which is to convert the degrees into radians, because LabVIEW does not accept degree operations within complex numbers. 
So we convert by 2 pi over 360. We have, we have uh, piggybacked this to this operation and this operation, so we only need one. We take V1, we convert it from there, um, taking the new phase angle, and then we have now we now plug V1 and V2 into our operations. Here you can see where we convert R2, L2, and to Z2, and then L1, R1, and to Z1 right here at this right here at this node. We then take these and then plug them into the respective operations as well. Z1 takes place right here at the bottom of the circuit. At the end, we, able, we are able to um, calculate the values of I1, I2, and I3 by I1 subtracting V1 minus V of X over Z1. <clears throat> For I2, we subtract Vx minus V2 over Z of 2. For I of 3, we just simply divide V of X divided by Z3. Lastly, on the bottom right, you can see how we calculate the power. The power is calculated by squaring the current running through the resistor and then multiplying that times the resistance. So in order to find the power going through R1, we square I1, and you can see I comes I1 comes from here, goes up from here. We square this, and then we multiply this times R1. We follow these steps for R2, R3, and then we are able to find all the power for all of those. And this is the circuit. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great day.